bit of condition. A little bit choppy out there this morning. Now, come up, not predicted to get a lot windier than this, but uh, you never know the conditions down here in beautiful Victoria. Pouring rain in Melbourne, but beautiful up here at Lake Epilock, not a cloud in the sky. We can see the start boat out there just getting organised and ready now, and our junior boats will be out onto the water very, very soon. It's going to be quite bumpy for the kids out there and the juniors, so it should be pretty exciting for them. And uh, we're just getting the final pieces of the puzzle together. The course has been put in. It's all in place. Conditions look great. Scotty Lambert's up and all. to uh, all of our friends at home. A few of them have got COVID, uh, Scotty, unfortunately. So big shout out to uh, all the people out there. And we hope you're okay and uh, isolating and getting it all done. And uh, certainly hope that uh, we see you back at the boat race because we've got a couple missing from this one. But uh, certainly some great boats here as we see the big Aussie connection. Great to have the big Rolls-Royce Merlin here as well. So won't be too long now, folks. We'll uh, take... We'll be back with the racing very, very soon. Mate, for maybe uh, the first meeting for quite a while. Yeah, it is, mate. It's, uh, it's great to be back, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's so great to see some, uh, some uh, you know, the big boat out there just looking all across at Aussie Connection. Neil Howe. How long since he's been in that boat? Well, I... I, I don't want to tell him about, you know, uh, 88 uh, here, uh, or 89, sorry, 89 here, uh, right, nearly right in front of us, mate, when, uh, yeah... Yeah, a big one. Uh, and of course the Kiwis went on and won the cup. Yeah, yeah, sad day, but uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to know what the nerves are like, but I wouldn't mind getting down and made an interview. Well, well that'd be a great idea, great idea, yeah. Fantastic, Well, welcome, uh, you're down from Yarrawonga, mate. Uh, you're all well by the looks of things. This breeze, uh, it's going to stay about the same by the looks of things, so hopefully it uh, won't get too much bigger because uh, at the moment it looks pretty raceful, but it will throw up a little bit of a challenge for our competitors. Yeah, it might be a bit tricky for the uh, juniors, uh, you know, and the 25s and that, mate, I, I, I'd imagine. Uh, they've just got to be a bit careful coming out of the top corner, uh, coming back uh, into it. Or, or, it's a, or it's a bit of a side breeze, isn't it? It's not really uh, a headwind, so, yeah, it might be a bit tricky for them. But, uh, you know, the big boats, uh, I think they'll handle it pretty uh, pretty well, mate. Yeah, well, look, you know, most of those guys, well, especially the guys in the displacement, Sammy, really enjoy that little bit of a chop and it gets the boat sitting up on top of the water and actually breaks a little bit of surface tension as you go a little bit quicker in these sorts of conditions as well. And as you say, mate, it is a sort of a 45 degree uh, sort of a crosswind there. I'm just watching the uh, junior boats getting out onto the track now, so I can see that uh, the time to come there was here to Norwich. Um, just trying to pick up on this, that's uh, the... Uh, the boats we're looking for, mate, time to start with 
Uh, certainly is, and uh, they've been putting on uh, quite uh, a brilliant displays uh, over the last, uh, you know, uh, few seasons, mate. Uh, and uh, others have stepped up, you know, they've gone out of uh, this class, they've gone up into other classes, of course. Uh, you know, I know my grandkids have gone into uh, 25 horsepower and with the 550, so, uh, yeah, they uh, really uh, do turn it on for, for us, the, uh, the commentators, as well as the crowd, mate, and, and the family involvement is absolutely unbelievable. And the sun's in the right direction to uh, do exactly that, the show, you know, uh, beating onto the water, so, yeah. See over here, and uh, or down here, I should say. And uh, this uh, beautiful-looking uh, Viking boat is no longer in those colours. Yes, for the artist. Yeah. Uh, very uh, nice paint job on it, and the boat looks beautifully Keep. prepared. So pretty excited to see that one run around as well, mate. Um, so I've got an update of this. My mic dropping in now a bit, uh, Sammy. So we apologise for that. The boys are just working on that now, but we'll just forward on at the moment. Um, times are tough, we've got uh, Little Hostile Jack, Jack Mead, Rocky Bride's in the Fat Chance, the Flat Out with Jake Jackson, then it's Prime with Josh Taranto, and Max Seckham in the Venom, so that's our first race, so I've just got the update of this, Sammy, absolutely nothing like the first this uh, <laughs> Well, that, that happens to us, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where 
Still on at the head of the pack, though, between Jack Mead and Lockie Bride. It's got Venom running into third spot there at the moment, so it's uh, hostile. Back to Pat Cash, back to Venom. Then it's times are tough. Sorry, no men are running into uh, fifth spot, so just trying to pick up the third boy at the moment, I'll just get sorted. And around and out the field there is Jack uh, Josh Carano in the prize. drove the nose in and had a little bit of a wild ride there but it's checkered flag so it's uh, hostile taking the win <laughs>
Test one, two. Test one, two. Test, test. Right, Sam, well, I think we got some... Uh, test one, two, test one, two. Check one, check one, two, one, two.
here from the flat out machine with Taylor Jackson. She might take a win here. This is going to be an unbelievable charge to the line, but it is. It's going to be Taylor Jackson takes the checkered flag in the flat out. The second place is the Aquasonic with uh, Tyler Scott. Then into third place is the Venom with uh, Maxi Second. Then it'll be Aiden Chan in the wing in it. Two white boats coming through. That's hostile coming through there. And then we've got Lily Taranto in the Megatron. Now Lily must have had a little bit of a hook or a good spin there that I missed because uh, she dropped right back through the field, unfortunately for her. She did have a spin, thanks Paulie. My cameraman's all over it. So uh, not sure if we picked that up on the live stream, but uh, hopefully we did. But uh, poor old Lily having a fair dinkum go there, which is great to see. In fact, I was talking to Mickey Trano this morning, her father, and he said, ah, oh, Lily will just cruise around. She won't do anything too crazy. Well, turns out she's had a red hot go and unfortunately uh, ended up, she was in podium position, but that little spin saw her at the back of the field. But good signs for her. She's pushing hard and going well. And the boat's going well too, so great stuff from our juniors.
test one two test test one two All right, Sammy, so uh, the next race we've got on the card is the 105 mile an hour category, mate. And these are uh, fantastic races. These categories that they've brought in, you know, the uh, the 85, the 95 and the 105, really brought a lot of boats out of the sheds, haven't they? And it's also given us a pretty eclectic mix of um, boats that race against each other. You know, things like tunnels, hydroplanes and displacements, inboards and outboards, all getting out there together. Oh, certainly uh, does that, uh, Bichot, yeah, and... Uh very, very uh, clean competitors, uh, pretty uh, competitive racing as you said, very, very close racing, so that's uh, what it's all about and uh, I suppose uh, the other thing is too, the uh, the pocket, you know, uh, <laughs> not costing mega bucks. Yeah, no it doesn't, it, uh, it's, you, well you can spend what you want yeah, in these yeah. classes, as long as you, you can hit you, that 105 mile an hour. You can't so go further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, you get disqualified if you go over. So. Just have a quick look through the uh, boats that are running in this one. We got uh, Sammy Lucas. He's uh, just a prolific racer, uh, boat racing, also ski racing. He races uh, mono hulls. He races tunnels. This time he's in the Armourine Jackson's F2 boat. He's running the uh, Mercury Optimax 2.5 litre on the back of that boat. They've got Stevie Rumble. A big layoff for Stevie Rumble. He's been pretty nervous. Yeah. Speaking to Stevie, but um, he's in the Cut Cat Racing, mate. Stevie's an absolute champion, isn't he? Oh, he certainly is, and there hasn't been much rumble in him of late, as you said, uh, Bishow, but a very, very keen competitor once he gets that helmet on and, and, and pushes that uh, start button. Yeah, he is. We just watch you on the screen now. Uh, it's Sammy Lucas just uh, heading out through. Now, Sam, your microphone's playing up, mate, so um, uh, oh. at the moment, I don't know if... Uh, oh. Right, oh, I'm very... Con they're confusing me, Sam. I've got no idea. <laughs> Anyway, Sammy, I think you're okay. So yeah. we're just looking at... Uh, well, just hang on. There, just, we're having uh, a lot of technical problems, mate. Yeah, but, a few uh, technical yep. issues. We'll get there. Um, but Stevie Rumble's ready to go, mate. The other boat that we got out there now is um, Mel McCanch, Melissa McCanch in the Gator, the big six-litre hydroplane. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a very, very uh, nippy little machine, a Bergeron. I was actually over in uh, Canada when uh, a guy said to me over there, he said, uh, we, uh, one of you Aussies has just acquired a, uh, one of our boats. <laughs> and that's where it went. That's where it went. No, mm. It's a beautiful boat. And they've, they've had some success with it. They've also had some pain with it. It's yeah. laminated. Yeah. Um, they've had a few, uh, had to do some hull repairs. But yeah, yeah that's racing. Sam, you're hard on the gear when you race. And um, that's what happens. Stuff breaks. So 
They've just had a brand new engine built by Bradley Nankervis out there at uh, LW Nankervis in Bendigo. And I believe he didn't want to come either, uh, show. <laughs> Why? Well, he wants to come, but he, he said, if I do come, it's pain for me either way. Because it'll either go well and, and you know, I won't need to be there or, or a $2 thing might break yeah. up and then it'll be pain. And if I'm not there, and yeah, it was a lose-lose situation for Brad, but... Uh, no, look, he'll be all right. Um, just so, just watching on the screen, that's Sam Lucas. That's the GTR uh, composite tunnel boat. The other boat that we've got, uh, other couple of boats we've got running out there, mate. Russell Jones in the hot cookie. Now that's been a quick little boat, hasn't it? It ha certainly has been a uh, quick little boat. And uh, Jones, you know how to pedal these uh, machines, mate. Yep, another hydroplane. Sam yeah, well. yeah. So good to see a couple of hydros in the mix there. Also, uh, Frenzy. Now, this is first time for Rob uh, Williamson. In the Frenzy boat. That yeah. was a Clarkie's boat, of course. That's right, yeah. Um, so uh, Brett uh, sold the boat uh, to Rod, and now Rod's running it. Rod used to run a little boat called Rat Attack. Uh, Brett, it was yep. an open cockpit boat. Yep. Um, so it would be great to see him up and about in, in this boat. Now got about 800 horsepower under the foot now, uh, Brett was telling me. Now, Brett was the owner of the boat, so he's saying 800, is probably like 600. And in a cell, mate, so, you know. <laughs> in a cell. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, no, he's got a lot more horsepower than the little rat attack boat, so it would be great to see him run around. Look, he'll just be out there trying to feel his way around in this one, I would have thought, first time out in the boat, first race. So, you know, he'll uh, he'll just take it easy. And then the other boat that we got out there is Big Maxi Stevens in another madam. Good to see him back as well. It's uh, uh, certainly uh, is, and I see uh, Bobby Webster is uh, here with us too, so uh, welcome, Bob. But uh, great to see Maxie, and I believe little brother Peter's going to have a drive later on. Pete, he's going to have a uh, steer as well, and uh, yeah. I spoke to Pete this morning, and he said, well, uh, I'm going to drive, and I'm not going to be last. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of uh, sibling rivalry between Max and Pete as well, yep. so yep. be interesting to see. Uh, I said we'll be comparing lap times at the end of the day between you blokes, so it's going to be bragging rights in the Stevens household. Absolutely no doubt about that one. So uh, just getting the boats organised now, mate, as we can uh, just see... Um Oh, Mikey Johnson actually uh, looks like he's getting just into the cockpit. I'm not sure he's in this heat. He's in the next heat. So, um, But the other boats uh, for this 105 race, just getting ready, Sam. So we'll take a little break. Uh, enjoy the pictures coming here from beautiful Epilock. This is the 2022 Epilock Gold Cup coming to you from the Derrinal Pool at the Victorian Speedboat Club here at Lake Epilock. My name's Dave Bishop and joining, joining me is Sammy Smith in commentary. And uh, we'll look forward to some great racing in just a moment.
All right, so picking up our boats on their warm-up lap now as we see... Um, just having a look at Cud Cat Racing there, Stevie Rumble, first time back in the boat for a long time. Sammy Lucas in the Armourine, Jacksons. On the outside is Frenzy, so Rob Williamson. He'll be pretty nervous now, Sam, I think, first run in this boat. He certainly will be, there's Big Maxi Stevens and another Madam uh, Bichon. And our high goes a hot cookie on the outside with Jonesy. And Melissa McCanch on the inside in the Gator. And they're up. That yep. new Nankervis engine, mate, should yep. be an interesting run here. Yeah. Uh, it certainly will be, and of uh, course, folks, uh, Melissa McCanch and the Kelvin, uh, they uh, combined to have uh, a race each. So uh, then I'll bring, I guess the bragging rights, uh, mate, at the end of the day is yeah, who's got the most wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dinner table, you want to mate, because there's going to be no winners there. No, no. If Kelvin wins, he might not get any dinner. Not assuming that Melissa does the cooking anyway. Calvin's not doing the cooking. <laughs> yes, Who knows? yes. He might get his dinner thrown at him. <laughs> Never know your luck. She might get her dinner thrown at her. Well, she blamed him for uh, doing the sponsoring at uh, Yarrawonga. Oh. And said, you broke the boat, you fix it. That's right. <laughs> As it should be too, mate. So this will be a great little race. 105. So these boats all carrying GPS. And uh, if any of them break out over that 105 limit, they are DQ'd. We won't know that, Sammy, until after the race. So we call it as we see it, and we wait for the judge's decision later on. White flag flying high on the start boat. Bang, go! Is the call we're away? Sam Lucas gets a good start in the other way. Jackson, Stevie Rubble gets it away. Yeah, the outside, the man has got plenty of us off. And to the end of the pin jump, up into the turn number one as we go through, Sammy. Yeah, Scotty Lucas got a blue around that uh, corner, mate, as he uh, goes down that back straightaway. Is it, uh, I think it's Maxi Stevens and another man of over on the outside there. It's Melissa McCann's doing it very nicely in the data. Adam's come to a stop there, Sammy, oh, on the so outside. No problem there, uh, Michelle. So that brings Frenzy up, but it's Sammy Lucas in the Armourine Jacksons for all the outboard lovers at the moment. Getting it done pretty nicely at the moment. Caution flag comes out onto the course. They've obviously got their boat stopped out there. So, uh, but they're continuing on racing. Here we go, Stevie Rumble having a red hot go, but a big challenge being thrown down by one of your hydroplanes, Sammy. Oh, here they come, Melissa McCain's the outside boat in uh, the Gator, but Cat Cat uh, overalls it on the inside there, where Stevie Rumble is trying to go uh, with her as they go to that bottom floor to be shown. This is a great race for second place at the moment as Sam Lucas charges on his merry way out in front. The Gator makes a little bit of ground on the exit of turn number one as they come down. Stevie Rumble now puts the hammer down in the Cut Cat Racing. Yeah, well, I reckon the hydroplanes just got a little bit more top end going down there. The back straight away, but Rumble says...
Ash Sammy, the big boys coming out to play now. Yeah, folks, this is what we call the bad boats. Uh, the show blowing out the whole displacements. Yeah, it's going to be a cracker, mate. We've got uh, a couple of uh, six-litre boats yeah. uh, in uh, Turn It Up with Connor Patterson and also Mikey Johnson uh, in the Addicted. And then the Big Bangers, we've got uh, Johnny Backer in the Rival all the way up from Terralgan. Yeah, big 21-foot uh, Rival boat, mate. Yeah, good boat, that one. Uh, been plagued with uh, some unreliability issues, Sam. A lot so of is... problem. Yeah, so let's hope they can uh, string one together today. It'll be great to see because it shows a lot of potential, that boat. And he has turned the hat around, mate. He's uh, instead of facing uh, the rear of the boat, it's now uh, facing the traditional style, and he reckons it's a lot, lot better. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so it'll be... Uh, they were having tune issues with it, so obviously, I guess, maybe it wasn't sucky enough air, or, or And he's who put knows. the cowling... But he had to make a new cowling, and it's sort of more square, but it goes up over the hat, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that yeah, one, mate. So yeah. we just have a look at the two six-litre boats who are leading the warm-up lap. It's uh, Michael Johnson on the outside, and Connor Patterson on the inside. Then it's John back with the rival. Comes through the cheek blown boat. Wow, wee, that's got some mumbo, Sam. And you know what he told me, Bishar, he said 25 years ago, Skinny, you told me when in second to a crossbow to run here the night senior in the Liberal Gold Cup. Wow, wee, yep. I can't remember that. <laughs> 25 years ago. 25 years ago, Sam. That's I'm only about half your time. <laughs> Uh, we've got the band fusion there with Rick Duddington. Uh, we've also got Blake Ramsey there in uh, the Destiny boat. Yeah, that's strong boat now, Destiny. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that boat goes. It's been well in our locker. Yeah. And uh, he's still not achieved the wild child. Didn't he get a wild ride in Tasmania there? Mate, that is Kevin Bird with a small jump in. Yeah, he certainly did, mate. Had a huge lows in, uh, in that boat, spun around backwards. Did a bit of damage to it as well, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what Darren can uh, produce for us here today. Start boat will uh, pick him up. I'm trying to pick up the start boat. Oh, there it is. Yep, sorry, I couldn't see the start boat there for a moment, but we've got it. So it looks like um, Darren is going to start one out, one back in the wild child, so that'll be interesting to see. He might get a run at him down the first straight. But the flag drops, Sammy. We're racing. Take it away, son. Well, what are we a clean start from all of them now as they go through David. Still up there. Is it now or is it now? What's going on here? I don't know what's going on. None of them are gone, Sam. None of them are gone. What's happened? Very strange stuff indeed, Sammy. The flag was down. None of the boats went. Uh, Darren Robinson came to him, split them all. Now they're all confused. And now they're all going for it down the back straight. As uh, Johnny Backer leads the charge at the moment in the rival machine, firing away down the front straightaway. Very strange start. That one will be reviewed, I'm sure. But Backer has a little bit of a go. Chris is still in the high position now. Destiny running up into second. Then on the outside of the down runs in the ball. So, Connor Patterson on the inside. Mikey Johnson at the back of the pack there. And on the inside, him is Rick Cunningham and Bad Fusion.
rival machine. Jared Clay comes out. Oops, does he come off or did it have a problem, Sam? Not sure there. Oh, the hatch is up. That might be an issue there for Johnny Macker on the bottom straight away. Still, they took the win. Third place will be Darren Rogers in fourth. They come through, uh, running into fifth spot will be Michael Johnson in the six leader boat, and behind him, Rick Dunnington in the bad fusion boat. Wow, Sammy. That start, I, I looked across at the start boat, the white flag was down, and nobody had gone. I don't know what happened there, so that one will be discussed, I'm sure, at great length. There may be discussion with the officials and certainly with the other competitors. Darren Robinson was the only guy that saw the flag was down and he just split him like a wedge like Bill Muncy and just, just went for it. So, uh, in fact, Johnny Backer did a pretty good job to chase him down and get him in the end there, but I reckon Johnny Backer's maybe hurt that boat, so that's not, not a good sign. Well, it's our blah, blah, mate. Yeah. Blah, belt. Yeah, he went on and off and on, not, and I reckon he's just... Yeah, could well be. That's uh, when you'll go. Paulie, our cameraman, reckons the boat. Did you see it come off, Paul? No. He's just guessing. Yeah, oh, he reckons there's no belt on it. There you go, mate. So, Paulie's all over it. Thanks, mate. But, uh, yeah, as you said, hard on it down the final straightaway, and that's when things will let go when you're really leaning on them hard. So, well, what a weird, weird race. Certainly was, but what a run from Connor Patterson. Turn it up. Yeah, Connor, great Six job there. Leader. Six litre boat. He's put put at least four blown boats behind him in that one. So uh, he'd be very happy. Might be Johnson, I think, would be a bit disappointed with that one. Certainly didn't show the pace that we expect. Yeah. Well, Lindsay did say that they hadn't uh, fired it up since the UC Rivers Cup, so they didn't know whether it would start, <laughs> wouldn't start. <laughs> Maybe it's on four cylinders, <laughs> who knows, yeah. But uh, he was having a good little dice there with uh, Duddington in the bad fusion, but uh, certainly... Certainly wasn't the pace that we sort of expect out of that boat. Next race on the card, Sammy, is going to be our unlimited hydroplane category. So you'll be excited about this one, mate. Hot Cookie, the Gator and Aussie Connection. So, oh, the big V12 man, mate. Yes, very excited. Does back some memories from many, many years ago? <laughs> 27 litres of oh. supercharged Rolls-Royce Merlin. World War II Spitfire motor, eh? Fabulous stuff. Yeah, mm. can't wait to see it get out on the water again. And, of course, Neil Hell yes. at the helm. First time I've been in a cell. Wow, it'll Come be here? interesting to see how mm. Neil uh, operates there in, in this one. So it's going to be very interesting. And uh, they've got him down as provisional, too. It's been that, so it must have been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a long, long time. And uh, the circuit obviously wouldn't suit the big uh, V12. No, they we, used to, you know, big, big open expanse of water like down a longer triangle course where they could really just get out wide and keep it keep it on. Yeah, well, they used to run the big triangle course here too, didn't they, Sam? Yeah. But uh, it's uh, definitely not uh, not uh, on this occasion. So, yeah, I think the corners will be probably a little tight for the big uh, Thunderboat. But we just love watching it go around and, and especially listening to it go around. It's awesome. Yeah, well, I was very fortunate to be in Detroit uh, in 2018, mate, and they had 12 of them on the bank. And uh, they fired them up one after the other, yeah. and they all tried the crowd went berserk. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Awesome stuff. Yeah, they do it very well over in the States. So, uh, just focusing in there now on uh, the Aussie connection. You can see the uh, six pipes coming out the side there. That's that's half the engine. I think they've given it, given it a cut and polish too, mate, because I went down there early this morning and had a look at it, and mm, it's pretty shiny. Very, very, uh, very shiny. Pristine, beautiful. Canopy actually suits it really well, doesn't it? it? Does. They've done yep. a great job with yep. the canopy on that boat. And looks very, very sleek and fast. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. But uh, great to still have one running around there. Probably not the most competitive thing now, no, um, no. given that they're big. And, you know, uh, the, the, the modern hydroplanes are so nimble and so fast with the supercharged engines in them. But um, we still love the nostalgia of the big oh. and going around, don't we? We certainly do. Get him, AD. 
Well, Sammy, I'm going to say that this is the uh, 85 mile an hour class because it's certainly not unlimited hydroplanes going out now, like mm -hmm. my program says. We're looking for Andrew Chilver in the carnage. Old Horny with Pete McDonald. Moonshine with Ivor Godsell. Paul Witten in the uh, Takana. Freedom with Bobby Reed. The Artist with uh, Mark Schultz. One more with Nathan Barkat. Short Temper with Jason Jones. And the, On the Money with Hayden Worski. bit of an interesting mixture out there in this one as we see him doing the warm-up lap. Andrew Children here. It's in the red board on God's cell. Then it's the old horny. Bobby Reed there. The artist on the money. One more with uh, Nathan. I think this is Nathan Barnes cat um, first race in that little red boat so that'll be uh, pretty exciting for him he's been testing the boat I saw he had a little bit of a problem fracturing the hull in a practice uh, uh, a couple of months ago so he's obviously done a great job to get it back out onto the water so good job by him big field of boats this 85 mile an hour category's really brought them all out Here we go as we line up waiting for the flag to drop now. White flag still up. Bring him right down. Bring him far too far down in my opinion. But there we go, he's let him go now. Not a bad start. Bobby Reed had a big break in the middle and he's let him go early. And uh, I think they just held on to him far too long in that one. The first quarter's going to be absolute chaos. Andrew Chilver will run the pole line. Let's see what he can do in the 1754. It's a super quick boat this thing. And Andrew is a hard peddler. He's in good position now as they fire down the back straight away for the first time. Bobby Reed out into second. Uh, Ivor Godsell, sorry, Godsell's into second. Bob Reed into third. Gets out playing over the rest of the field as they head up into turn number one. Turn number two.
number two for the first time. So, Chile now, Andrew Chilva just running through there. Doing a good job. And he's been overhauled here, so he's had a little bit of a problem there on the exit of a turn number two. So Chilva goes back into second spot. Now it's uh, the moonshine. Out in the first place, hot cooking in the third. Freedom. Taking some big hits down the back straight away as well. Oh, we've had a boat stop. The lead boat stopped. Oh, we've got a red flag. We've got a red flag there, Sammy. So, and that's because the old horny boat has stopped mid corner. I thought we might see a red flag. They waited a while before they did it, Sam. Well, I say, I should not wear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll gather that back together and we'll get back into our next race very shortly. I'll just drop you out of the commentary box for a moment. Be back real soon.
Check one, two, check one, two. Test one, two, test one, two. Test one, two, test one, two. Test one, two. Yeah, it's, yeah, China, yeah. Test one, two, test one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Test one, two, test one, two. Yes, please. 
Folks, well, uh, welcome back. Sorry we've had no PA. We've had a few technical issues, but uh, we're back on the wire and we are ready to go. This is a rerun of the 85 mile an hour category. Had a great run in the first one. Absolutely hunted by the rest of the pack now as we fire down the front straightaway. It's all over God selling the moonshine now. Let's hope these guys can keep it tidy and straight this time around. God selling the little Evering and the moonshine doing a fantastic job. It's out over that 85 mile an hour speed cap or they will be DQ'd so we're going to have to wait for the judge's decision at the end of this one but at the moment it's moonshine the Everingham doing a good job I've got to pick up the light down and set up on his merry way hey this is a hard charge to deal with from one of the uh, newcomers Jason Jones in the short temper on the second spot then it's back to the top of the old silver box Bobby Reed on the outside is the Irish then it's one of the old straight to the Paul Wynn on the inside and rounding out the field, Hayden Bolotsky. Doing a good job in that big Millennium boat. First timer for him as well, so we've got a few first timers out there, but the, uh, the best of them at the moment would have to be Jason Jones in the short temper, running in the second spot at the moment. It's going to be Ivor Godshaw, he'll come through and pick up the second flag. The moonshine gets the job done beautifully. And I tell you what, first race is the second one for Jason Jones in the short temper. Great run for him. The LS engine in that uh, little 17 foot Charles Clay Hull. Look at the man on the third. Andrew Jilly Jones on the inside. It's a hard charge of Bobby Reed. Jilly made the right up on score. And on the outside there, it's the Arthas. Mark Schultz, then it's Paul Winden on the far outside, Nathan Bartscat in the one more, and rounding out the field is the uh, on the money with Hayden Orsetsky, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing his name right there, Sammy. We're down to one microphone at the moment, folks, so that's why you haven't heard the dulcet tones of Sammy Smith, but we're working on that one. And uh, we will endeavour to uh, get us both onto the console really soon.
So don't forget folks too, don't forget folks too, you can uh, tune into the live stream on GP Hydro live streaming. You can do that via Facebook uh, through GP Hydro live streaming or uh, Bisho Media. And uh, you can watch the footage and also get the commentary on your uh, phone or your tablet or whatever you've got going on. And also let the people at home and around the world know that uh, they can tune in as well. So all going on here, a uh, few teething issues up here at GP Heights by Live Streaming, our first race back for a while. We've got, we seem to have a lot more technology, but there's always a lot more that can go wrong as well. So we're working on it pretty hard at the moment. Scotty Lambert, his, his hair, well, it would have fallen out if he had had any, so uh, he hasn't, so it's fine. He's still smiling. Here we are, he's always smiling. As long as he keeps bringing me lollies and Jack Daniels, I'll be okay. 1.6 litre Oz Life hydroplanes. Don't look at that, Neil. You, uh, you wouldn't mind a JD right about now, I don't reckon. So, 1.6 litre Oz Melton Toyota 86. The S15 No Direction HBR Predator. Cheap category, pretty fast, they do about 80 miles an hour, and uh, you know, pretty cheap to build, own, and maintain. So, great. Uh Boats, of course, uh, unlimited hydroplane. Not really a category that gets run in Australia too much anymore. We really only have uh, probably the one, which is Aussie Connection. Um, we do have Grand Prix hydroplane. Um, we've got uh, a six-liter, two six-liter hydroplanes going out up against the big Merlin in this one. But it'll be an interesting race because the little six-liters are pretty nippy. Uh, the big lumbering Merlin will go around the outside of the course. Just trying to pick up Hot Cookie. Hot Cookie had a problem. The Gator, beautiful, uh, beautiful machine. The Gator boat, uh, Sandy, out of the United States. Yeah, yeah the Bergeron uh, there, and I'd say Kelvin McCants is aboard. But what would Neil Howe be thinking right now, mate? He's the first time in a cell a long, long time since he's been in a B12 Merlin. Uh, what would what, what, going through the morning? I'm not sure what age Neil would be these days either. He's probably uh, got his seniors card, has he? He's probably around mine, mate. <laughs> oh, he's just a, just a young pup then, Sammy. Great to see him up and about, though. Great to have Neil Howe, one of the legends of Australian powerboat racing. Back in the big Rolls-Royce Merle of the Aussie Connection. This boat built in the early 80s and has raced in the United States. Had a cell fitted to it only recently, a couple of years ago. Geez, they're slowing them down a lot. They don't want to do that. The, uh, the big Merlin won't want to settle down. It'll want to uh, get up on the plane. I would have thought about an 80 mile an hour start. The pace would be about right for the Merlin. They've got him down to about 40 miles an hour at the moment, which is far from ideal. Neil running the wide line. That's what he needs to do to just keep that boat speed up. He'll swing it round, and uh, he's going to hit the pin pretty hard, I reckon, here. This boat 
capable uh, probably of around 150 to 160 miles an hour in current trim, probably in its absolute heyday, 180 mile an hour boat all day. But uh, let's see what happens here. Flag drops, so it's going to be a uh, Whichever of the McCanters is in it, going very, very well, and unfortunately, Sammy, Aussie Connection coming to a stop. Yeah, that's unfortunate for the big boat, but uh, I guess uh, Neil will come back and uh, sort things out, mate, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see it later on the day. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, very, very complex engines to keep going, these big Merlins. Fantastic when they're on, but uh, a lot of hard work to keep them going, and unfortunately, this boat is based out of Bendigo, so it's a local boat. So uh, we've got the caution flags out, and we've also got one lap to go, which is the yellow flag. So the catch really dancing. It's a brand new uh, in this boat. And I tell you what, it is light and flighty, Sam. This is uh, a wild ride. It certainly is a wild ride at the moment, trying to trim it down to get it right. Uh, they settle it down, going down that back straight away. The shell and the power can really be uh, shown now as he goes down to that top corner last time. Yeah, using the canard wing under the uh, the left foot to adjust the wing between the two front sponsors to adjust the attitude of the boat as they come through now. But certainly having to uh, try and pull the boat down as it dances very, very high the last two laps into this headwind. And I want to be a little bit careful I don't blow this boat over backwards. But it is very, very quick, very nimble and very fast. The Gator takes a win in unlimited hydro plane. Unfortunately, only a two-boat race, but... Uh, Spectacular to watch that boat go around. I hope uh, Nana's uh, watching it on live stream because that motor sounded very well, uh, Bisho. I was chatting to uh, Bradley Nankervis during the week, mate, and he was very nervous. He wasn't nervous, but uh, he just said, oh, God, if I'm not there, you know, something will go wrong. But uh, no, that Brad Nankervis engine. Bradley, uh, very clever engine builder, one of Australia's best. He's uh, did his uh, apprenticeship with uh, both Larry Perkins and Ford Performance Racing in the V8 Supercars and uh, then went back into the family business and is building engines uh, back with his dad, Leo, and his uh, brothers, uh, Rowan. And um, very, very clever guy and very, very nice people to do the Nankervis boys. Lovely blokes and um, built a mean, fast engine, that's for sure. He actually built, uh, I don't know if you've ever watched Love the Beast, uh, Eric Banner's uh, XB Falcon Coupe. Uh, Bradley built the engine for that car as well. So. He built some pretty cool stuff, the uh, Nankervis boys, Sammy. Yeah, I'd say Kelvin was there, mate, because I think I can see Melissa. All oh, right, so it was Kelvin. So uh, I hope he didn't break another sponsor and he'll be in more trouble, won't he? So 1.6 litre hydro is going into the water now, so it does look like they'll be next on the list. And we've got a good field of 1.6s, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Times are tough, uh, Paul Norrish. Um, Norris has just picked up some new propellers for that boat, so let's hope that uh, we see some action from that particular boat. That's the times are tough. Melton Toyota 86, of course, Grant Harrison, always super competitive. That's the boat that's on the crane at the moment, about to go into the water. So Grant, always the one to beat in this category. My man, Ryan Dewey Nichols in the S15, the boat that I drove yesterday. Sammy, I hope it doesn't break. Well, I said uh, someone new was in it. There was an outboarder on an it with, uh, you know, an inboard to tune it up just to get it right. Yeah, I gave Dewey a few tips, you know how it works. Uh, you know, ran the boat around, got it right, got it balanced out for him, and uh, he's pretty happy with the tips I gave him. If you believe that, I've got some swamp land in Queensland, I can tell you. Uh, so that's the S15, the No Direction, the beautiful Jazzy Frankovic, um, whose birthday got canned, her 21st birthday got canned because of COVID. 
So I hope we're doing that again sometime, Jasmine. But um, she's super quick in the uh, little shovel nose hydro, the no direction as well. Uh, Bradley Holland in the HBR. Brad's always a competitive runner. This boat started life as a five litre hydro and they put it back to 1.6. And um, it, uh, it goes incredibly well. It is one of the bigger boats in the field. And newcomer, one of my ski racing mates, Sammy, is Andrew Donahue in the Predator. Very aptly named boat for Andrew. And um, he's, he's, uh, that's Mike Smith's old, uh, old machine. And uh, beautiful boat. And uh, it'd be great to see how Andrew goes. Andrew, very, very hardcore and hard competitor in ski racing. And um, he won't hold back on a little bit. My man Huddy Ellis in the 25 taking a chance going into the water as well. So good to see him stepping up out of the junior ranks and heading out with the big boys, even though he's a big boy now. Running a fair mullet on him too these days. The mullets are back in, Sam. The mullets are definitely back in, mate. Yeah, so uh, I know we might have to uh, stand him up in front of the crowd to see who's got the best. Yeah, we could do a mullet competition for the younger drivers. I had a beautiful one in 1987, Sammy, but. Uh, no chance, no, all it all fell out. I raced boats and lost all my money and was too stressed out, so that was the end of that. Russell Embleton had one as well, of course. Now he's just grow, growing himself a baby. Hello, Russ. Hi, Chris. What do you do? So, uh, great to see uh, Rusty, and uh, Rusty, of course, is the uh, main man that runs the Australian Offshore Superboat Championships as well, so good to see him here as well. Uh, running around his home, his home track of Lake Epilock. He loves it out here. <laughs> it's not Epilock. It's not bad. I'd have a ski on that. It's all right. It's okay. All right. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in just a minute. Awaits them down at turn number one. And they'll come down, he'll pick them up. Bring them down here again. One full lap and they'll be racing. Flags are flying. I think he's in the middle of that corner, so we can probably start it, but that'll be up to the officials to decide. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, looks like they're going to start this one. So white flags up on the course boats. White flag up on the start boat. Let's see who gets the best of the starts. Harrison's got pole position. He's going to be hard to beat from there. Watching for the flag. Flag's been hard to see on this start boat. They bring him down a long way. They seem to be doing that today for some reason. Bring him right down into the corner before they let him go. They're not letting him go. So they're going to take him for another lap. It's a 
shame, Sammy, because we had a beautiful line up there. That's a perfect line up, mate. I've got uh, drop and slow at the end of there, but uh, well, the safety is to prevail, mate. I've got to make sure it's not there. We're well off the course. So we don't want any incident on that uh, first corner. One of your neighbours, isn't he, Sammy, out there at Yarrawonga? There's the Yarrawonga guy. Uh, come up uh, from Melbourne, of course, uh, mum and dad and uh, all the kids. And, yeah, and our resident Yarrawonga. There's quite a few others, too. Uh, Lindsay Johnson comes up there, he's got a holiday home up Yarrawonga, Bible. How long do you have to live in Yarrawonga before you consider the local, Sam? Uh, I think it's 55 years. 55, okay. And even then, you're still struggling, I reckon. I moved to Bendigo a year and a half ago, and they've oh. told me 20, but I don't think I've got any chance, to be honest. Big shout out to me, Big Boss, who's here this weekend as well. Big Dennis Tad, good on you, mate. Hope you're having a good day out there, and you can hear me now. He has to listen to me all day, every day, and now he's here listening to me as well, so... Um, you'll be sick of me by Monday, I'll give you the tip. Anyway, 1.6 litre hydroplanes out on the water and uh, lining up the lineup. Yeah, they might get it right here. I reckon uh, Harrison sort of leading the charge here. They've let them go, okay. So Jazzy Frankovic was a loser out of that one. She was out the back door, but we are home away. Harrison gets a good start. Direction machine as we go up through turn number two, Sammy. Yeah, certainly, uh, but Harrow doing it well out in front, as you said. Uh, GP uh, driver, but uh, likes to get into that little 1.6 and uh, have a spin of it uh, just to relieve a little bit of pressure, I'd imagine. But uh, that uh, Melton Toyota boat just to tell him from one sponsor to the other, as it should. Brad Holland, have a look at him, he's uh, flying that boat just a little bit higher than Harrow, and it's going okay, so he's in control there. And then, as you said, the pet of the boat at uh, former White Smith Boat City, beautifully on the water, we show. And then, for the boat, that do, he's doing it like, okay. And Jasmine Walt, still a little few uh, hiccups for that white boat. Uh, no direction, back on the tail. Yeah, just looking at a few hand signals coming back as a force out of the cockpit of the no direction from Jasmine there. I don't know whether she's got a problem or whether she's just acknowledging the stop boat there, but uh, I think there may be just a little bit of an issue with that no direction boat at the moment. Dewey Nichols' boat, considering it's a lot older than the three boats in front of it, doing a very good job to stay in touch with the leaders at the minute as he fires down the back straightaway. These boats capable of about 80 to 85 miles an hour in race trim, Sam. There has been uh, a kilo run. The kilo record one of these little boats is just over 100 miles an hour uh, at 101 miles an hour for the record. But these boats probably running in the 85. Have a look at Holland's dance. Hard and fast. 
Forest. In second flag comes out, and it's all going to be Grant Harrison in the to Melton Toyota 86. Taking the win of the 1.6 seat of Hydro Blades back to Brad Hollands and HBR. Great race between those two boats. He's done a great job there. He's really got that boat up on the pace. Sounds angry. It's an angry little engine. These are four AEG Toyota engines, little twin overhead cam. They have absolutely. Yeah, well, why do we have the bonus to stop shooting? I'm happy with that. Ready to come to the third place, Andrew Donnie, your first race ever. Get the race for the Well done, Andrew. We'll see what's more from him. Dewey Nichols, the man, the myth, the legend that is. Takana and on the money. So let's uh, let's see how these boys go. Pretty excited. Zach Murphy, who's come up through the junior ranks, done a lot of 1800cc racing, driven our boat, the rebound quite a bit. Um, now his first ever race in his own boat, boat that he built himself, was 1750 horse, the Envy boat. So um, good luck, Jackie. We hope you go well, son.
Okay, folks, so we've got our outboard boats heading the water now. Unlimited outboard, Sam Lucas, Paul Witten. Two boats heading out there first, Sammy Lucas and the Armourine Jacksons. But Andrew Chili Chilver in the red 1750 board there, the Carnage. Hayden Wilolski is in the uh, the black boat on the outside and the little 1750 bull at the Envy with my man Zach Murphy in his first race in his own boat built the engine himself built the whole boat himself with a lot of help from dad and aqua power marine where he works so uh pretty excited to see how Zach goes in this one his first drive in this boat So this will be Hayden's first uh, outboard race. He, uh, has, he did the uh, 85 mile an hour category earlier today, so he's got a little bit of a feel for it. Sam Lucas should be a walk up start in this one. Uh, the Armourine boat, definitely the quickest boat in the field. But I'll tell you what, Andrew Chilver in the carnage here, the uh, Red 1750. He is hard at it. He's a hard man, he's a copper by trade. He doesn't take any, you know what, from anybody. And he pushes hard. Rides, rides dirt bikes for the police force, Sammy. So gets to pull over all you whackers on your dirt bikes in the middle of the uh, bush out there and whack you around. So he's a, a ripper operator, is Chili. So start by picking him up. Oh, we've got someone on the outside there having a little bit of a jump and a leap. It might be Hayden, I think, there. In the on the money. Nice lineup. Start boats bring him down. So Chilvers on pole. Flag drops and we're racing. And look at the pace on Andrew Chilvers, 1750 bullet. The two big bangers go out at the uh, Armourine Jacksons with Sam Lucas, Andrew Chili Chilvers. This is going to be a good battle between uh, a couple of these boats here. Sammy holds him a little bit tight there, just gives him a boat with uh, Chili. That won't bother him one little bit. He'll want to race. The uh, Armourine boat will have uh, probably a little of pace down the straight but probably not a lot I wouldn't have said and then it's Zach Murphy on the inside and Paul Witten on the outside as they fire down the back straight in the Envy and the Takana then the on the money with Hayden rounding out the field up through the top turn we go on the tunnel boat now the cornering ability of the tunnel boat uh, fast superior to the mono hulls and Sammy Lucas now he won his uh, first race the 85 or was it 105 mile an hour race and now he's storming down and uh, rightfully into his place in first position. We are uh, certainly expected that. Andrew Chilvers doing a great job to uh, try and stay with him, but uh, got, got as much power on the back of that boat as the tunnel boat, but uh, yeah, the uh, mono hull, a little bit harder to drive, a little bit harder to get through the corners. This is a good battle. Zachy Murphy doing a great job in his first run in the Envy boat, the boat on the inside. And uh, Paul Witten on the outside in the little Tennessee boat, the Takana. Hayden comes through and on the money, running out the field. The real battle in this race is for second at the moment. Looks like Paul Witten has a little bit of acceleration over Zach Murphy there as they go down the back shooting. In fact, maybe even a little bit more pace for the inside running there. Uh, boating well for Zach Murphy at the moment. He's just trying to hold Paul Witten out. Widow just unable to close the door on him at the moment. He just doesn't have enough uh, boat length, enough track position to be able to uh, get him shut down. Whoa, Paul Witten has a bit of a wild ride, kicks the boat up on its side as he exits turn number two for the second time. Zach Murphy now is good. There's a little bit of a gap, so Widow's now gapped him a little bit. Murphy up into fourth spot. 
Witten up into third. But Takana, the little Tennessee hull, just got the uh, getting the job done over the little bullet here at the moment. Sammy Lucas picks up the yellow flag as he uh, laps Hayden Wojolski. Sammy Lucas goes on his merry way. This is preparation for him for the Australian Formula Grand Prix Championship, which he'll be competing in this season. Actually crashed this boat at the last round at Yarrawonga, and uh, they've done a big rebuild on it. They've also got the spear boat as well, they've done a big rebuild on as well. So Andrew Chilver, second place at the moment for him. He picks up the yellow flag, taking a couple of hits as he tries to get that boat settled and turned into uh, turn number one. And Paul Widow Witten there coming down in the Takana. Checkered flag will come out. Sam Lucas puts another lap through. So checkered flag for Sammy Lucas. Paul Witten will have to go on and finish his lap. Zach Murphy, who's been lapped there, he will finish. Money comes through and picks up the checkered flag. Now Chile will come through. There'll be seven spots for Andrew Chilvers in the carnage. Super quick little 1750 bullet that one. He is absolutely flying. Ripper bit of gear. Now we do have um, one of the uh, cut cat cars blocking. I don't know what it's blocking actually. What's it blocking? I think we're all good. Uh, Paul Witten comes through in the Takana and gets the job done there. Nicely done. So a uh, little bit of a procession there, but a good race between uh, second and th uh, third and fourth, I should say. Paul Witten and uh, Zach Murphy. Zach not quite able to keep up the pace yet. He's done an extra lap there, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they say to him about that one. And so too has Hayden. So, boats will come back into the pits. Next race on our card will be our 25 and 550. So it's gonna be a, a massive field, Sammy, of little boats that we can't see very well.
Okay, so the commentator's nightmare going out onto the water now. Our 25 horsepower boats and uh, 550cc boats. Let's run through and see who we have. There's about a million of them out there. All of them little and all of them hard to pick. So we've got the Aquaholic with Alex Shepardley. We've got Glenn second in APBA 13. Maverick with Tate Williamson. Uh, Timmy Martin in the Miss Martini taking a chance uh, will be Lucas Ellis, Kelsey Dempster in the Dictator, Bullship with Charlie Kerwood, Sean Oliver in LO Racing, Addicted 2 with Jackson Seckham, Last Chance will be Hardy Ellis, and Rex Reckless will be Baxter Ramsey. Now, it's one thing to read them off the sheet, Sam, and it's another thing to pick them as they go past. So, don't shoot me when I get this wrong. <laughs> Mums or dads. <laughs> Mums or dads. That's right. Jackson's second. Uh, so, the boat out in front, that's easy. That's a little tunnel boat. That's, uh, then that's Sean Oliver in LNO Racing on the outside. Then we've got Aquaholic on the inside there and APBA 13. Then it's uh, Lucas Ellis. A little tunnel I'm not 100% on. Yes, Dictator there. Um, Maverick. Oh. <laughs> In with a chance, uh, which is Putty Ellis. So there's about three there that I'm having trouble with, Sam. So it's not bad out of a, out of a big field. I'll still get slaughtered, Sammy, it won't matter. That I didn't pick there, yeah, the black one, which is the uh, Miss Martini, which uh, Tim Martin driving, Sammy Martin normally drives that one, looks like Dad's in the boat uh, this weekend, he's too old for that, surely, he's going back to his youth, he's like me, he's having a midlife crisis, I'm having a midlife crisis, I don't know what I want to be and I don't know what I want to do. Fortunately, Neil, I don't have a drinking problem. Two hands, one mouth. Looks like Aquaholic got a cracking start there. So too Sean Oliver in the LNO on the far outside. APBA 13 doing a good job. Dictator there with Kelsey Dempster doing a beautiful job right in the mix and uh, addicted. Uh, in with a chance, taking a chance. All running through the rest of the field. So looks like on the exit of turn number one, it is the Aquaholic. So uh, that's always been a super quick little boat. Alex Shepardley doing a great job there. Then it's back to APBA 13, the addicted boat now starting to have a red hot go. Uh, and it is a 550 boat, so it'll have a little bit of pace on these 25 boats, I'd suggest as it comes up the back straight. And then you can throw a blanket over the rest of the field as they charge up the back straight away. Tate Williamson there in the Maverick, right in the mix of things there, running on pole. Around about six or seven spot at the moment. But it is still the Aquaholic out in front, but it's being chased down by the Addicted. Addicted too is uh, Jackson Seckham. Doing a great job in that boat. In fact, he's uh, lost a little bit of ground on that top turn. So 
So that's an interesting one. But uh, anyway, we fire away. So it's still Elliot uh, Shepherdly in the Aquaholic out in front. Comes through, ticks off lap number one. APBA 13 running into third spot at the moment. Uh, that's Glenn second. So his son knocking him off at the moment. Then it's uh, Dictator. Then it's back to uh, Lucas Ellis. Then Excalibur. Sorry, it's uh, not called Excalibur anymore. Experts make the same mistake for uh, more complex reasons. It's Maverick now, which is a yellow boat. Used to be called Excalibur. And Miss Martini and rounding out the field is Lucas, uh, sorry, Huddy Ellis. Oh, he's having a bit of a wild ride there in the, uh, the little wing boat. And it looks like we've got problems here for, is it Sean Oliver in the LNO Racing? So he's back into the pits. That's a shame because he was doing very, very well. They'll get that boat sorted out, I'm sure. Up through the top turn we go. Fantastic entry level racing. These are cheaper than go-karts, folks. Three or four grand get into one of these little boats and uh, there's really not a lot you have to do to maintain them. You just run them around. They don't wear out tires or brakes. They use bugger all fuel. You can go away and uh, race your boat for about 25 bucks for the weekend. It's fantastic. Aquaholic still out in front, addicted. Second spot. APBA 13 and then the Dictator. Then it's uh, Lucas Ellis. I'm trying to pick up the little black boat there, I'm not quite sure. they put their numbers on my sheet Neil that'll be useful <laughs> Maverick coming through uh, Miss Martini and Hardy Ellis coming through rounding out the field at the moment I think that might actually be bullshit that boat that I couldn't pick up there uh, Neil with uh, Charlie Kerwood on board, doing a great job actually. He hasn't rolled it over, which is a, you know unusual for him. So we've got a yellow flag out now, race leader really getting the job done nicely. Alex Shepardley in the Aquaholic. He's flying along, beating the 550 boats. Gee, it's standing up on its tail too. I hope he doesn't get too much of a headwind there. Could turn very ugly very quickly. Addicted, still running into second. But the battle's really on here between the APVA 13 with Glenn Seckham and uh, Kelsey Dempster in the Dictator. Charlie Kerwood in the... Uh, Bull whatever it is, bull something, bull ship. Try saying that five times fast. And Maverick coming through down through the bottom turn. Miss Martini, Timmy Martin. Should be seeing a checkered flag now, so race leader, and he will be your race winner. It's Alex Shepherdly in the Aquaholic. Very famous boat, that one. There's a great video of Grant Rollison driving that boat. Having a wild, wild ride. It broke the internet, that one. Addicted comes through. Second place. Third place is going to be the Dictator. APBA 13. And a 
Bull Ship comes through, so too does Maverick. <laughs> Miss Martini. through completing the course here as well and the boat was in force there is actually reckless with that uh, back to them that's uh, what he was looking for oh, that was hard work Sam So next race on our card, ladies and gentlemen, is the 95 mile an hour category uh, heat number one. Boats will be looking for, we cut cat racing, frenzy, moonshine, one more, short temper and the artist. We saw some great racing from those guys earlier. Um, and I'm sure we'll see some good racing again.
Okay, boats out in the 95 uh, mile an hour class. Stevie Rumble, Cut Cat Racing, Frenzy, Rod Williamson, Moonshine is Ivor Godsell. Then we move back to one more, Nathan. I won't pronounce that one, mate. Barge Cat. <laughs> Barge Cat. <laughs> no, he's down here though, so I don't think he's running. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, Nathan looks like out one more. So uh, then we go down to short temper, and that is uh, Jason Jones and the artist Mark Schultz on the outside. Pretty good class, uh, this one. The white flag is up. Stevie Rumble likes the inside. Cut Cat Racing, flag drops, and you know what? They are off the racing. Cut Cat Racing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good start. And what is the middle there, guy? Yeah, 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 That in uh, second place is that uh, Frenzy. Just trying to pick up the uh, one in it second. Oh, it looks like Moonshine is second. So uh, he's got a fly coming out of his moment. And uh, position there as they go down towards the corner the first time, then they got line in three as they go to the bottom corner, Cut Cat Racing on the inside, Moonshine in the uh, centre, and I would say over on the outside of it, it might be uh, Frenzy over there uh, on the outside of him, so up the front straight away they come, and the race leader, Stevie Rumble, uh, sitting that boat beautifully on the water as it comes up past the tower, so it's not Frenzy, it's one of the open uh, cockpit boats, so it might be short timber. Well, first and second and third is uh, sitting uh, there about uh, probably eight or ten away if uh, anything happens. But up the front straight away, yellow flag is out. Stevie Rumble inside. He is going to be taken on by Moonshine. Here now. And so I forgot to. Goes up on the outside of Stevie Rumble. What can he do? He's got three quarters and up to hold on to the lead.
right, so we've got Junior Boats heading back out onto the water now. And um, big shout out, getting a few messages. We are Sammy, a few people at home, including my little mate Nicole, who's uh, tested positive to the old COVID, mate. And uh, unfortunately, her partner Daniel Cook, who can't be here. Uh, to race this weekend due to isolation and all that fun and games. So um, I hope you're feeling uh, a lot better, niggers. And uh, big shout out. I hope you're uh, enjoying watching the live stream at home, Cookie, and not chomping it a bit too much. We uh, definitely miss you guys being here. Formula Futures onto the water now, and the boats we're looking for flat out uh, with Taylor Jackson, Lily Taranto in the Megatron, Aquasonic with uh, Tyler Scott, Venom with Max Seckham, Aiden Shan in the wing in it and a little hostile harry with harry meads the little hostile boat's been driven by both the meads boys so we've got little hostile harry and little hostile jack uh running uh in the two heats so let's uh, see how this one works out for us um looks like the kids are starting on the clock here guys no pole boat is it oh looking across here we must be running a clock i think a professional commentator would have found that out prior to uh, being up here, Neil, but fortunately I'm not a professional, so that's fine. I'm very trying. <laughs> Just ask Louise. The breeze still just coming through. It hasn't altered much for the day. It's been pretty good conditions all day, to be honest. We've, uh, we've uh, dodged any big, windy, rough stuff, so that's good. It's just a nice little wind chop, just getting uh, the boats up on top of the water and singing along nicely. So boats all sitting down that milling area, so I, I'm assuming we're running the clock. Um, for those uh, watching maybe for the first time, uh, a lot of the outboard racing is done on a handicap style clock start, so a big clock down on the bank. Uh, when it goes to uh, zero and starts ticking, you've got one minute to start, and then when it, the, the main big hand gets back to zero, that's when the race start is. And the idea is to hit the start line flat out and uh, get it going. So uh, that's generally how it's done, but uh, at these inboard type meetings at the VSBC run, quite often they run the pole boat start. So we just wait and see what uh, system we're running here in this one. You'll we'll see all the boats sitting down there in the milling area, but I can see the start boat sitting down there maybe waiting for them. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. We'll find out, one of the officials will tell us, I'm sure. Or maybe they won't, Sam. We just work it out for ourselves. But uh, anyway, white flag is up on the bank here in front of us. The tower. Generally means a clock, but they're waving, so I think they're waiting for these kids to come down. Yep, white flag's up on the pole boat, so these kids now need to get moving. It is going to be a pole boat start. Not sure if the kids are aware of that. They're all just sitting there like stunned mullets the moment or are they red fin in epilogue maybe the odd tarp or murray cod so if there's no clock on the bank i'm not sure what clock they think they're going to be looking at to start Neil. well there is a big clock is there oh it is down there yes in fact, there it is, there's zero. I could just see the tip of the clock as the boys pointed it out to me. So it is a clock start and everybody's late. So, um, but the best of the starters is uh, the addicted boat, which is um, gonna be, um, Joshua Taranto running in that boat, I believe. So he's got a cracking start. Then it's back to Venom and times are tough. Then the green machine, the... Um, so we're up and away and... Uh, Okay, I don't have a list on these ones guys, so I'm sort of making this up as I go along at the moment. So, um, we see Jed Norris running up there in third, so he's doing better than Dad at the moment, which is a good effort. 
the venom comes through, so that'll be uh, Mackie second. And Joshy Taranto in the prime is our race leader. Then you've got flat out, which is uh, Jake Jackson in the green machine there. And fat, uh, fat chance, Lockie Bride running through. He's into what's that one, two, three, four, fifth spot at the moment. And then we've got the hostile. Now, I'm not sure if it's a hostile Jack or a hostile Harry. One of the boys might let me know. Yellow flags out, one lap to go. So it's still all Joshy Taranto out there at the moment. Back to the Venom, the times are tough. The flat out, the fat chance, and the hostile. Down through the bottom turn, the beautiful pink. It's actually one of the addicted boats, but um, Joshy driving it on this occasion. And he's named a prime for the weekend, as in Optimus Prime, I assume. And he'll pick up the checkered flag, so Joshi Tirano takes a win on the The flat out there with Jake Jackson, he uh, gets a little bit sideways coming into the uh, final season. Though, second spot, back to uh, back to Colin Tuff. Coming through now is the hostile to round out the field of our juniors. Great racing from the kids out there.
Okay, good mate, you going all right? All right mate. Okay, so I've got our boats down in the milling area now. Yeah, this is big. We got uh, the great man, Scotty Lambert, coming up doing the camera work. So if the camera works, ordinary viewers following at home, because the main man's on the job. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. So we've got white flag up, clock ticking. Just watching for the hand to come through the hole in the back of the clock here. And there it is, that's zero now. So a little bit late again, these kids. It's Lily Taranto getting the best start out of everybody. All of them a bit late, but uh, she's nailed that. Well done, Lil. Then it's hostile. Then it's back to winging it, Aiden Shan. Then the flat out on the outside and the venom on the inside. And trying to pick up the last boat there.
All right, so Lily Torino still leading there. She's uh, we've had a bit of a uh, spin out there. Trying to pick up who that was. Oh, that was the uh, the flat out having a spin out there. Flat out spinning out. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't. It was the boat that I'm having trouble picking up at the moment. Spin there, not cool. Back up and going again. Lily Taranto in the Megatron picks up the yellow flag. She'll set off on her last lap. This is going to be a great win for her. She can just hold this last lap together. Aiden Chan just coming through. He's in third spot at the moment. Then it's the Venom. Then the flat out. So Lily just coming down the back shoot now. Into the final turn. Can she get this together? Can she keep it together? She just needs to get through the final turn. Great little boat this one. It's Chance Hull. 105 and 85. And I tell you what, this could be a little bit of a swim for her as well, I reckon. Checkered flag comes out. The Megatron, Lily Tirano, takes the win. Look out. That epilogue. Postal into second place. Winging it into third. the zoomy pipes Scotty a little 4.2 litre that's pretty cool looks like a blown displacement without the blower Bobby Reed Silver Fox has been racing for 412 years absolute legend I wish I had that much energy 1,222 checkered flags. There you go. Sammy's all over the stats. He's uh, been around a long time, Sam. Yeah, he has, uh, mate, uh, Bishow, and he's uh, done a great job. And he still loves to get out there and entertain. Uh, we've got the 105s coming out, and then the 85s, and then we're going to have a short break, Bishow. So anyone that would like to go up, the bar is open, we were told, up the back there. So at the clubhouse, if you'd like a... Amber fluid, but of course, drink responsibly because you've got to drive home, no doubt. So uh, the bar is open up at the clubhouse, and uh, the eateries, of course, are in full swing. And uh, we've been uh, saying throughout the day, don't forget, of course, to uh, adhere to the uh, COVID rules. So uh, and we've got quite a few positives around uh, our area back there in Yarrawonga, Wawala. So please uh, do the right thing, obey all those rules, regulations. And I'm sure that we uh, will be able to keep up and running powerboat racing and other sports around the uh, side.
One, not really sure. Sam thinks maybe Melissa. So we bring them down. So we've got Sammy Lucas on the far outside, Gator on the inside. I think it's uh, Cut Cat Racing and Madam. And this will be Pete Stevens in Madam in this one, Sammy. So this is going to be very interesting to watch. The old Fox coming back. You may as well park it right there, son. He's Mr. Turnboy. Now he's come across in front of everyone. Wow, wow, wow. That is a shame. I don't even know if he realised what he's done. But Stevie Rumble, that will be... is still trying to get all over him even though Sam is in the lead doesn't really need to charge him down but if I know Sam Lucas he's a racer and he will try and try and hunt him down as best he can Gator down front Sammy, I've done it. I've charged off to the wrong turn, boy, in my career, so uh, it happens. Um, especially when you're out in front and you think you're, uh, you've got everyone covered and it's all good, and then all of a sudden it's all not good. <laughs> Bad luck, Stephen. Sam Lucas takes the win for the Outboards. He nearly got there. I tell you what, Stephen Grumble's boat's got plenty of acceleration. He 
actually outgunned Sammy Lukes down the last straightaway there, but uh, Sam will take the win in that one, barring any other penalties that I don't know about, but I know for a fact that Stevie Rum will miss that boy, so he's definitely going to cop. I'm not sure what the penalty is for missing a boy. It, it may be a lap or it may be a DQ, I'm not sure. But either way, uh, he won't win that one.
the money. They're the boats we're looking for. After this one, we might grab Stevie Rumble for a little chat. White flags up. We're about to go racing in the 85 mile. Alton Horn is coming hard on the line. Oh, he could have charged the but no, they let him go a little bit earlier to stop that. Carnage gets a good start. turn two we go moonshine having a little bit of a hook and a drift there we've got the old horny on the inside this is you can throw a blanket over this field at the moment it's absolute chaos out there the boats come up through the top turn now we fire down the front straight on this 85 mile an hour category it's all over god's all at the moment but on the outside jason jones in the short temper Down the front straight away and Godsell's doing a great job. Just holding the boat back to that 85 mile an hour bracket. Jason Jones in the second spot. He's doing a great job. Suppose I got in front of her, pinned the ears down, and 
I just went flat stick. And uh, I lost, obviously lost so the other boy. And I saw the first boy. I saw, oh, that's it. And then I got there and I saw, oh, she's gone. It'd be great. Keep it, keep it going. But, uh, oh, look, well, it was a good race. I loved it. Win or lose. I just like being out there. I did win, but uh, I reckon I'll get a lap penalty. I was going to say, I don't know what the penalty is from his boy in Superboat Racing, but Jay, you think uh, maybe a lap? Well, it's definitely. Well, Sam Lucas was about a boat link behind you, so I don't think it's that little a penalty. No, no. It's always good to beat Sam. His <laughs> boat turns in the corners. It's unbelievable. It gives me the, the pip, you know. I'll come down the straight. I know I'm in front of him, but I have to slow down a bit in the corners. And uh, Sammy just comes around like he's on rails and I try and when I know he's there I'll try and push him out he doesn't know that but I, tr I try and push him out a bit further and, and then I'll pull it back in tight and try and get a bit of distance between me and Sammy but uh, yeah does he look across at you with those big teeth can you see them smiling out of the cockpit yeah yeah, yeah. I often see we try and keep uh, when we're out there I always try and keep eye contact you know um, as you know it's dangerous sport and uh if you can keep eye contact with the other racer, they're either a smiley kind of eyes or a red demon eyes, and they're the ones you try and stay away. But, uh, I know, I love, I love racing the 105 and the 95. I've got a little issue with the boat at the moment. I've got a little bit of coolant leak, but I'll fix that and uh, go back out and give it another go. Once you fix it, mate, fix the GPS and you'll be fine. I did 101 that time, so I didn't break out. No, I mean for direction. Oh. <laughs> good on you Stevie, have a good day sir You too Dave, see you later Well done mate, he's a ripper, Stevie Rumble folks Multimedia megastar, boat driver, commentator An all round good bloke He's a pretty good uh, electrician they tell me as well Well any electrician that's still alive at his age Has got to be a good electrician don't they? <laughs> We're on a short break, we're going to have a short break folks um, We'll try and catch up with a few people in the, in the commentary box We'll be back real soon So uh, guys in the pits probably are uh, mostly, but uh, we're looking for a starter pack or a battery uh, for Team Frenzy. So Team Frenzy are looking for, they've obviously had a battery issue, so if you can help them out with either a jump pack or a battery um, to lend them, uh, that'd be amazing. So if you've got either of those things, if you go down and see the uh, crew at Frenzy, that would be fantastic.
mode. Frequency mode. Channel mode.
Got Bud bringing them around. Flag is down, they are racing. Caught them in a pretty good line coming out of the shoot as they come out of the course. Brother. and coming down the front straight, they'll have one lap down. Oh, Sammy, I've just had to run back into the commentary box and bump there. Head back down, ladies and gentlemen, charging hard in the wild show. Unbelievable stuff as he tips it into the board, turns the bottom into the field. Oh, they can stay up. Right up on the board, Watson. Unbelievable stuff. Got a Patterson all around the outside now. And he's going to go. He's bumped in the back door. Robinson, but it's a race in th two, uh, three out there for second, third and fourth. Over on the outside, the Gator running a big race. Then further, uh, tuck it on the inside, Bad Fusion and turn it up the centre. So you go, you go, yellow flag up, uh, Fisho, one to go. Have a look at the Gator, keep your eye on this one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh right to the Gator. I told you to keep an eye on it. That is, that is on cue. Unbelievable stuff from the Gator.
OK boats out on the water. First boat out is Rival Johnny Barrett with 21 foot up. Did a blow about in the uh, in the first to the other end. Sammy Lucas in the outboard. And now uh, we move back to Destiny by Ramsey in the white boat. And uh, over on the outside, I think that Michael Johnson. Spears winner at Yarrawonga on AC Grimace Cup Day. So four boats. So this one should be a beauty, Bisho. Four boats, very, very competitive boats, and Sammy Lucas in there with him. Unlimited, Sammy, yeah. This will be great. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, at the inboard-outboard battle, as I always do, Sammy. I always enjoy... And, and it's not just inboard-outboard, it's tunnel versus displacement as well. It's, uh, there's so many variations there. It's a uh, big headwind coming at him at the moment, just getting a little bit gusty. And we are away. Mike Ramsey gets a bit of start with uh, Johnny Backer on the outside. So, oh, Sammy Lucas has got a boy. He's T boned it. And has got over the back of his boat. He'll continue on with the web penalty there for Sammy Lucas. So, on the outside. Down the back shoot. Poor old Sammy Lucas here we're going bugger. Oh, I now own a turn boy, which is never cool. <laughs> but he'll continue on. So battle continues on at the head of the pack as well. So uh So the Destiny boat still out in front, Johnny Baggers throwing the boat around everywhere, he's struggling to get the power down at the moment, when he does it's very fast, oh, Lucas and Michael Johnson got very close to the top turn as well, going everywhere, Blake Ramsey doing a very nice show in the Destiny boat, Johnny Baggers the rival, a little bit cleaner this time around the course, Sam Lucas and Michael Johnson in that great run, Look at the boy that he now owns. He owns it, I guess he may as well have a nice look at it. And, uh, although it hasn't gone down, I think you only own them if you actually puncture them, Sammy. And it, it looks like it's only just broken the rope off the bottom of it, so they'll get that sorted out pretty quickly. As long as it doesn't float into Axdale uh, anytime soon. Getting a few reports about the live stream too, Sammy. Um, people at home really enjoying it, so um, that's great, uh, great news. Uh, I was talking to Daniel Cook, and he's meant to be here racing, but he's home isolating, and uh, he's uh, very much missing the sport. So luckily, uh, he's got the live stream that he can watch. So uh, you know, doesn't make it quite as bad. Maybe it makes it worse. 
having to watch and listen to me. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll have them back next time, so that's all good. But uh, that wind getting pretty gusty now, Sammy. It could uh, throw a bit of chaos into the mixture as well. And uh, gee, that gator boat really susceptible to the wind. And uh, I hear that uh, Melissa McCanch is on the uh, on the radio to Kelvin, just telling him it's dirty wind down the front. And, get it down, settle it, and all that sort of stuff. Didn't look like he was listening too much, though. I, I wouldn't uh, think so. I'd say uh, Kel's a man of his own uh, ability, mate. So, um, yeah, but uh, maybe, uh, you know, when, she, when it's all over, you know, before the presentation, could be a good dressing down for you, Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's all very good. That was good racing. We love the blown boats. We'll be back with more racing in just a moment.
close to this train. Okay, folks, we're back with some racing and it's 25 horsepower and 550 outboards. And the field that we're looking for is quite extensive, actually. Let's run through and we got uh, Alex Shepardley who won the uh, first heat in uh, the Aquaholic. Then we got APBA 13 with Glenn Seckham. Tate Williamson's in the Maverick. Miss Martini is Sammy Martin, not Tim Martin that's on my list and who I called earlier so apologies to Sammy for that one um, taking a chance I think is Hudson Ellis the dictator is Kelsey Dempster Charlie Kerwood is in the battleship the bullship I should say Eleanor Racing they had a bit of a problem with that boat it's um, Sean Oliver uh, so hopefully that boat gets back out there I think it will be uh, then we've got Addicted 2, which is Jackson Seckham, which is a little tunnel boat there. Last Chance, which is Lucas Ellis. And Reckless, which is uh, Baxter Ramsey. So it should be a cracking race, this one. They always are, these uh, 550-25s. And Lucas Ellis is, uh, looks like he's out getting pulled back out up the ramp which is a shame for him maybe the boat didn't start or something like that not sure he doesn't look thrilled big man in a little boat <laughs> <laughs> somehow I got the bird <laughs> Oh, it's a steering column issue. We can see that. No oh dear. Too hard on the gear. That's what the big men do. They've got big muscles and they pull steering wheels out of dashboards. That's what happens. <laughs> and we are off and racing. Let's have a look at this one. So, oh, yeah, a bit wild, actually. It's pretty rough. Have a look at this. That's uh, Baxter Ramsey, I think, out in front at the moment, having a really red-hot go. Then the addicted comes down the outside. Oh, Aquaholic Alex Shepardley. They're all over the place. Dictators in there, Maverick. We got the uh, bull ship. Say that five times fast. See how you go. Eleanor Racing looks like, uh, oh, sorry, no, that's APBA 13. Getting my red and white boats confused there. So let's watch this down the back chute because it is quite sloppy now for these little boats. See uh, the bullshit with Charlie Kerwood having a bit of a wild ride. He's put that boat over a couple of times, so let's hope he doesn't do it again today. Uh, Kelsey Dempster, oh, she's had to back out of it. She's had a big fly there, Sammy, the uh, granddaughter. Having a go though, she's pretty fair dinkum. Drives like her grandfather. Drives like a grandfather commentates. Hard and fast. So, now this is going to be interesting. The tunnel boat here, running into a headwind. You've got to be careful in these little boats. So, uh, predicted to with Jackson Seckham. Running up the front straight. We have seen this boat blow over once before, so let's just hope that he keeps it real and keeps it under control running up into that fairly stiff headwind he's done a great job actually boat sat beautifully up into the top turn the rest of the field struggling a little bit with these rougher conditions but it's Alex Shepardley's the leader of the monohull boats and the 25s then it's back to uh, to Ramsey 
Oh, what's happened, Alex has had a wild ride. He's had a big hook and that opened the door up for Ramsey and also Charlie Kerwood. In fact, he looks like he might be done. That might have sealed the deal for him. Pulls into the middle of the course. Kelsey Dempster goes by as well. Then it's Hudson Ellis. <laughs> he may be sitting an inch or two higher than he was when he got in the boat. <laughs> and we've got a couple more stopped as well. We got, it uh, looks like Maverick has uh, stopped and got going again. I'm trying to pick up the white boat there. Can't quite make it out. Addicted charging hard up the inside of the Maverick, going very, very hard indeed. So Jacko Second doing a great job in this boat. Running into that stiff headwind. Boat's going very quickly. And we've seen the Maverick has pulled out as well, so Stott boats all over the course now. We can pick up Aquaholic Maverick. Another two down the front here that I'm trying to pick up. I think it might be APBA 13. Oh, oh, Shepard Lee, uh, sorry, not Shepard Lee, that's uh, Ramsey. Has a big jump and a fly. That leaves the door open for Charlie Kerwood. Charlie in the, uh, the bull ship. Always get scared commentating this boat, Sam. Back, uh, Ramsey now coming back at him. Wow, we these guys having an absolute red hot go. So Baxter gets his nose back out in uh, in front there. That's uh, Huddy Ellis there, having a big fly. We're on the last lap now. As uh, Seco comes through. To uh, pick up the yellow flag and set off on his last lap. The tunnel boat handling these conditions beautifully. Just a little bit sketchy coming down the front straightaway with that big headwind. Looks like uh, Alex Shepardley trying to get that little boat started. He's pulling on the uh, start cord, but... Seems to be not a lot of action going on out there for him, unfortunately, at the moment. So yeah, it looks like the APBA 13 stop. And there's another white boat that I can't quite pick uh, right down the end there. Um, no. No taking the chances uh, out there. Well, well, Hardy Ellis is, whichever chance one that is. And Lucas, of course, didn't start, so that leaves him on the bank. So back to Ramsey, he'll come through. So he's actually now the leader of the uh, Monohull 25 horsepowers, doing an awesome job. Now he gets the yellow flag, we actually given the second flag to uh, Charlie Kerwood, but second flag there, so that's your race winner is Jackson second in the 550 category. And uh, the dictator Kelsey Dempster is having a red hot go. Now it's going to be interesting to see whether, oh yeah, Seco looks like he's seen the flag, so he's slowed down. He'll just cruise that boat home, so great drive from him. Hudson Ellis now. I think that one's last chance. He's taken a chance and last chance. I think that one's last chance out there that Huddy's in. My sheet doesn't tell me, so. Yeah, we're gonna be towing a few in, Sammy, I think. Second flag's still out. We've still got a few to try and get the uh, job done here. These 25s, of course, running on the big course, so let's take them a little bit longer to get around than the uh, the bigger, faster boats. So 
So this is it though, this is uh, well basically the winner of the 25 uh, category. It's gonna be Baxter Ramsey, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for Baxter, great drive from him.
Cat, what's happened, buddy? Uh, well, like I said before, Bish, the um, thermostat, I had a bit of a coolant leak. Uh, a $50 part has pulled me up. Uh, it's one of those, uh, I won't say cheap, well, it is a cheap part, um, where the bit of pipe screws into the thermostat housing, and what it's done is uh, it's backed itself off, and then with all the vibration of the motor, it's torn the thread out, and I can't it up any tight and sit it on the o-ring and then she just spews out coolant so i'd rather pull out and uh save the motor because uh if i blew that motor it'd probably cost me fifty sixty thousand dollars to rebuild it well it would mate but don't act like you haven't got into that in the console of your car right now um but yeah it's probably just the hassle of doing it uh fish <laughs> it's not in my console it's in the back pocket of my wife's <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a problem, mate. Okay, 1.6s, mate, where you're about to see these guys again. Got a beautiful lineup. Good feel to 1.6s, too, Stevie. So uh, we're pretty excited to see how this one goes. They're going to love this headwind running into a little bit of a chop. It's going to really suit these little hydros. Flags dropped. We're away racing, and a good start there for the 86. Also, the HBR. Uh, it's very, very strong there in heat number one. And the the boys. Jason Krangovic out of pole two and the newcomer to the game Andrew Donahue won out one back but the good news is Paul Norris in the times a tough boat he sneaks up into fourth spot as they round two number one and that boat's up and about after having a little bit of an electrical problem in race number one and coming to a stop great category this one Steve yeah I love it I, I thought about it uh, Grant Harrison's got uh, building these boats in kit form and he's got another one coming out which uh, Stevie Scott's just about finished it now and uh, they were supposed planning on running both of them this weekend, but uh, it didn't quite get there. We still had a few things to be done, and it would have been great because I think Grant Harrison was going to throw in, uh, oh, I can't think of who he is, but anyway, one of his mates, and uh, the two of them 
Probably Paul Cunningham, was it? That's the man, Cunningham. Paul Cunningham. Whoa, look at hey, mate, look at this battle, absolutely. We got side checked, but the battle's going on in the course here, Stevie. This is unbelievable. Have a look at Holland. He's absolutely giving it to Harrison up the inside here. Harrow hasn't been challenged like this for years. Unbelievable racing. And Brad Holland gets about four or five boat links out in front as they fire down the back straight away. Fantastic racing from these two. Rodney Norris is doing a great job. He's overhauled. Bobby Nichols is going up into turn number one. But the real battle's at the head of the pack at the moment, boys. Savvy, this is some great racing. Oh, absolutely. Uh, gunnel the gunnel they are. And look at Holly on the inside. HBR on the outside, of course, the master. On the... Uh, Going, trying to uh, stay with him in a Melton Toyota, Grant Harrison. There he is out of the slipstream now. Hooks out as they go, go very wide out there. Bishow and come down the front straight away. But who said you can't have a race in two? Well, this is fantastic. They're broken away from the rest of the field, but what an unbelievable run here. Brad Hollands, I tell you what, Harrison hasn't been challenged like this for a long time. Hollands is absolutely throwing it at him. And the little yellow HBR boat running on pole. Fantastic stuff as they go gunnel to gunnel and deck to deck down into turn number one for the second last time. Holly gets a little bit more of a break on him as they come through. Harrison trying for all he's got at the moment in the Melton Toyota 86 as he pulls up alongside again. He gets a little bit of acceleration on Hollands as they come out of the bottom turn. Gets about a rope, a boat length on him. I went ski racing there for a second. And uh, it looks like the Toyota 86 has got a little bit of a better launch down the back chute there. Can Hollands pick him back? Another good battle going on here between Froggy Norris and, of course, Jasmine Frankovic on the inside. And then another battle here as Andrew Donahue comes past Dewey Nichols in the S15. Yellow flag is produced, here we go. So it's uh, Harrison, he's extracted the digit and he's actually managed to get out the inside of Brad. Brad won't be too happy with that one, Stevie. Oh, he's going so well, Brad. Keep an eye on it because Brad Holland's not gonna give up that easily. He's a tough little competitor and uh, he's running around that outside. He actually does the old switchback, crosses the watch of Harrison, but it might be too little too late now as they go down the back straight away. This is where Harrison seemed to be a little bit quicker than Holland's down the back shoot. Down the front shoot, they were uh, around about the same. Yellow flag lap for these guys now as they fire away. The rest of the field battles are going on. We've got Andrew Donahue running the really wide line. He's still on his rookie uh, rookie stripes in the uh, Predator boat. But we've also got Froggy Norris, who's uh, running the wide line as well. In fact, wider even than uh, Donahue in the Times a Tough boat. And he's just trying to overhaul. Jazzy Frankovic's doing the, the right thing and just standing on the pins here. Looks like Norris has a little bit of pace on her, but he's running pin to pin and doing a great job and still running up into third and fourth spot respectively there. Jacket flag comes out. Harrison takes the win. Over Hollis Hollis. Gandhi across the finish line here. Fantastic stuff from the yellow HBR home plate. Dewey Nichols picks up the jacket flag as well in the mix. This battle for second place still continuing down the back chute between Jazzy Frankovic and Froggy Norris here. This is an enthralling battle between these two. Frankovic running that tight line and uh, Norris running the wide wall. See, Norris has a bit of a jump there. Now he runs in tight. So he's uh, trying to apply a little bit of pressure to Frankovic now. Now he goes wide again on the exit of the corner. This could, this could cause him a problem here. She might get him down the last straightaway. He's probably got a little bit of pace on her in the uh, headwind. It's going to be a drag race to the line. This for sec uh, for third place, I should say. Froggy Norris, Frankovic on the inside. Jasmine Frankovic has the lead at the moment for third place. This is going to be a battle down to the wire. Norris having a red off go in the top to top. But it's going to be Jasmine Frankovic in the third place. And Froggy Norris in the fourth. Great racing for the 1.6s. Commentary box goes wild. And my man, Dewey Nichols. I drove this boat yesterday, Stevie. I gave him a few tips. Rip a little boat. Dewey's got the job done there. And Andrew Donahue uh, out the back door a little bit. This is only a new boat to him. 
very nice bit of gear. It's Mike Smith's old obsessed boat. And uh, it's a really, really nice bit of gear. Uh, Andrew is a ski racer uh, since the 1970s. He's a ski racer. He's been to world championships. He's a very, very accomplished competitor. So uh, great to see him out. Find something, something different and having a bit of a go. Andrew actually skied through the side of a boat in a race once. He's leg. If you have a look at his leg, it's a bigger mess than mine, Steve. Ski through a side of a boat. Yeah, he skied through the side of a timber boat. Took the extractors out with his leg. But he didn't see it. Oh, it's spun out in front of him. Oh, that's no excuse. <laughs> no excuse. He is, he is from South Australia, so he has had his second head removed years ago. He seems fine. Um, he's uh, oh, he's about 103 years old. No, that's not true. You know, Andrew. I don't know. He's 50, he's not old at all, not compared to us, mate. No, he's still a stud. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, Froggy Norris, that's a good run. Good to see Froggy Norris coming through and uh, getting the job done there. It's good to see Froggy. His boat, I tell you, that man has just got so much go in him to get that boat up to where it is now. He's been struggling with that thing for as long as I can remember and now just to see him running around and not having many problems. Is it's great to see great family too out of Yarrawonga. Sammy, your your neighbours out there. Going back, back, back to Yarrawonga. <laughs> We're gonna do some karaoke tonight in the clubhouse, are we, mate? That might be the go. So my man Dewey Nichols comes in. There's Jazzy Frankovic on screen. She's uh, had a great run. <laughs> so uh, great racing for our 1.6s. We'll be back real soon. Right, so we've just been discussing up here in the commentary box, boys, because we don't, we're the last to know. But we believe the final of the Epilock Cup is coming up in a race or two. So um, get your backsides, trackside. I think, uh, has the engine gone back into the big dog? Uh, just trying to see over there. I'm not sure if they've got the Merlin back in the VS41. Uh, obviously, Aussie connection. So. Um, so we'll try and get a set on the final. My oh, engine is back in, there you go. Thank you, Neil, great job. Or is that Paul? I don't know which one of you it is. Anyway, either way. No, it's Neil, there you go. Neil's, Neil's nodding. Uh, so the big 27 litre supercharged V12 Rolls Royce Merlin has been put back into the Aussie connection. They had drama with that engine. Let's hope that they can get it out there and get Neil House circulating in this final for the Epilock Gold Cup. 2022 will be back real soon.
98, so 95 mile an hour category hitting the water. Now, this is a bit bumpy. Stevie, you're a displacement driver. That looks pretty sloppy out there to me, and I look at those displacement boats, and I can't see much V to give you much cut through the holes and much comfort. What's it like bumping over this stuff in one of those things? Uh, well, once you get up to speed, when you're going slow like that with the start boat, you're getting bashed around a fair bit. Uh, but once you get up to speed, as long as you can kind of get up on top of the waves and clip across the top, it's not too bad. Um, it changes when you get at hydro. Uh, they leave massive holes and um, sometimes in the corners, you hit the corner and you, can, you hit a square edge bump. And it's, I, I don't know if a lot of you people ride motocross, it's pretty much like riding across the motocross bike. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you mistime it or that, can hurt. How's your back? Uh, ask me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's not from this weekend. That's from running with Sam Lucas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the ocean. <laughs> no, you're an idiot. Anyway, here we go. So, white flag up on the start boat. In fact, white flags down over. Goldsell gets on it straight up. Fantastic stuff. Jason Jones in the outside of him. Greensy on the far outside. And the artist on the pole too as they go down through turn number one. It's all big eye to Godsell as he fires down the back suit in the moonshine. Then it's back to the artist, then the uh, short temper with Jason Jones and the frenzy with uh, trying to pick it up here. So um, yeah, Rob Williamson. So I knew owner, he's caught me out a bit there, Sammy. But uh, Rob's done a great job in that boat today. It's uh, obviously a new deal for him. And uh, looks like that's, um, who's getting towed back in there? Anyway, that doesn't matter right now because that's not about this race. As we fire down the front straight, it is, oh, it's Bradley Hollands here, there you go. Um, Ivor Godsell, he's taking a few hits down the front straight. Have a look into the hull, just slamming the water as he comes through. Doing his uh, 95 odd miles an hour. Artist now with Mark Schultz just gets overtaken by Jason Jones, but he's on pole, so Jones will go back into third spot and try and push pretty hard to try and get round uh, Mark Schultz in the artist. Rod Williams. What, what's that, Stevie? So I wouldn't want to be in that little white boat coming second. That's a small boat with a big engine in it. That'd be mistake god help you <laughs> <laughs> well let's hope there's no mistakes the yellow flag comes out one lap to go for big Ivor Godsell as he fires down the front shoot oh it's Mike in it at this stage Joe Ivor's uh, the owner well, allegedly the owner who knows <laughs> so yeah it is Mikey Godsell of course and uh, now Jason Jones he has made a good break down to second place he has overhauled the artist boat with Mark Schultz. And on the far outside is the Ferenzi machine with Rod Williamson. Yeah, it is his uh, first time in the cell and uh, Rod's doing great job. A lot more horsepower than he's used to as well. So. Um, doing a great job out there and just learning the boat and learning his way around. Go right down the front chute, check the flag down, and Mike Godsell takes the win in the moonshine. Well done. Today done well with Mike will get your clap. This second run, Jason Jones on his first weekend racing in the former ski racer and uh, Moved over to circuit boat racing. He's a great skier, actually, young Jace. And a very good great target as well. Done a great job in third place. A great job there for Mark Schultz in the artist. And then Rod Williamson in the frenzy. He's back right now. Thank you. 
Mikey did not start.
Well, thanks, Emmy. Uh, yeah, so this is the Eblock Gold Cup for 2022. Destiny out of one, Wild Child out of two, Rival out of three, out of four is to turn it up. The Gator out of five, a bad fusion with Rick Duddington out of six. And looks like Rival's got a problem. So that's uncool because that boat was going very quickly, but uh, looks like it's all over for Johnny Backer. I don't think he's going to get to the start from there. That's a shame, Sammy. But the rest of the field is down in the bottom turn. I tell you what, this headwind for the Gator, it's going to be very, very hard to work for uh, Kelvin McCann. Keeping that boat settled, but I tell you what, if he can do it and do it right, he might be able to get over the bumps a little bit better than the displacement boats. Time will tell, the wind really kicking up here. This is going to be wild, ladies and gentlemen. Get your backsides, trackside, because we have got a quality field for the red 12. Flag, red, red flag, flag, red flag is out. Red flag is out. I would say it's going to be deleted for one of two reasons. Not sure why Darren Robinson thinks he's going. So, red flags all over the course at the moment. These guys really need to be watching. Patterson's seen it. These guys really need to be watching their flags better than what they are. Boat driving out onto the course, trying to get them to stop here. And now they've seen him. Okay, so Darren might get a little chat to the stewards after that one, I reckon. Um, but uh, now we are assuming here in the commentary box that uh, it is because Johnny Backer hasn't fired and he's uh, floating down the main straight effectively, so they'll get him towed in. The other thing in my mind, uh, Sammy, is uh, how rough it is out there now. Um, but, as we saw Darren, um, the boats were coping with it okay, getting over the top of it, so I don't think that the uh, conditions, although they'll be pretty hard in the boats, they're probably raceable, so. And as I always say, race to the conditions. All right, we'll get this little mess cleaned up, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with the start of the Eplock Gold Cup for 2022 in just a few moments.
Alrighty, so we're uh, just cleaning up our little mess that is the uh, 2022 Epilock Gold Cup. And whilst we do that, we're putting our uh, unlimited outboards out on the course. So we've got Zach Murphy in the Envy. We've got uh, Sam Lucas in the Armourine Jacksons. We've got Andy Chilver, Chilvers, Chilly Chilvers in the Carnage. We've got Paul Whitten in the Takana. And Hayden Wazowski in the uh, on the money. He explained to me how to pronounce it, Sam. I think it's Wazowski. 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 I don't know. I've forgotten. We'll call him Hayden for all intents and purposes. Pretty bummy out there. In fact, Hayden's probably in the right boat for this. It's a bit sloppy out there, and that big Millennium boat, uh, they're a Queensland built boat. They're built for offshore conditions, probably more built for water ski racing than uh, for circuit racing. But just on this particular occasion, it'd be a pretty good boat to be in in, this, in these conditions. Uh, it would be interesting to see how he goes. Runs the Mercury 3 litre 300X power on the back of it. Sammy Lucas into this big headwind in the tunnel boat will need to be a little bit careful. Not to uh, put it over backwards. I'm sure uh, his crew chief, Stewie Jackson, will be conversing with him about that. Here we go. The flag drops, we're racing, we're away. And Sam Lucas gets the best of the starts. Looks like our young Zach Murphy got a pretty good start there as well. And uh, Lucas is going to be first head into the pin, but the rest of the field very tight and bunched up. Coming into turn number one, let's hope uh, Paul Witten does a spin out like he did last time because he's got Zach Murphy on his inside, but it's all very neat and tidy. Andrew uh, Chilly Chilver. Normally very, very speedy. Just didn't get off the mark the way he normally does in the carnage boat, but now he's showing a turn of speed as he fires down the back straight away. He overhauls Paul Witten. Paul Witten takes a couple of big hits. Oh, Zach Murphy takes a couple of big hits as well. They all are. In fact, the rough order really sorting the men from the boys here in this particular race. Chilvers probably got a fair bit of horsepower on the other two boats, but he's struggling a little bit in these rough conditions. And in fact, it's Zach Murphy that pokes his nose into the lead. Then Paul Witten comes back at him. This is fascinating stuff for second place. You nearly forget about first place at the moment as Sammy Lucas goes on his merry way. The real battle here is for second, third and fourth. The on the money boat, uh, the one that I thought might have been pretty strong in the rough, still only uh, a beginner at this game, so he's uh, just feeling his way around. But it's Paul Witten who's come out of the rough order on top at the moment. Andy Chilvers there uh, working pretty hard in the carnage on the outside. And Zach Murphy just a little bit over trimmed. I actually told him to level it off a bit, and he hasn't listened to me, so good on you, Zaggy. You need a nice level attitude in these conditions in these boats. You don't want to be over trimmed so that when they do jump, they jump nice and flat. Don't throw their noses up in the air. That's what Paul Witten's doing now. You can see he's running a very level attitude on that little Tennessee boat. The two bullets have both probably got a little bit much trim in them for my liking in these conditions. When they are hitting them, you can see their noses are going up instead of just jumping nice and level. Chilly looks like he's got a little bit of a break on uh, Zach Murphy now, but it's uh, Paul Witten is the man that's really showing these three guys the way at the moment. Sammy Lucas, of course, in the tunnel boat, just soaking up the bumps beautifully and uh, just doing it very, very comfortably indeed. They'll be uh, pretty keen not to hurt this boat after the big rebuild that it's just been through. So they'll just run through and just get the job done. Great effort here by Paul Witten, though. He's probably the man at the moment, to be honest, for mine, in the, in the uh, little Tennessee. 
Tennessee's probably not quite as good a rough water boat as the Bulls. You can see Chilvers now has levelled his boat off a little bit and it's looking a lot more settled. Can he make the ground on Witten? That's going to be the question. Well, Hayden has a bit of a wild ride in the uh, on the money. He's not quite on the money at the moment. You can see he's working very hard, stabbing at the throttle. He needs to level that boat off a little bit as well. And uh, just wobbling around and uh, really working hard. Welcome to Powerboat Racing. So, uh, Zach Murphy, he's leveled off a little bit as well. So maybe he's starting to listen. Maybe they can hear my commentary out there, unlikely. Doing a good job. Yellow flags out. Sammy Lucas, he'll come through and pick that up and set off on his final lap. And the Armourine Jackson's machine, but uh, Paul Witten really is the class of the monoholes at the moment, doing a fantastic job in this little 17 foot tunnel deck, Tennessee. Chile having a, a little bit of a rock and roll there. Beautifully prepared 1750 bullet, centre steering in this boat, 2.5 litre Merc race engine. And Zach Murphy, this only his first race meeting in his new boat, the Envy machine. And uh, he seems to have settled that boat down a little bit as well, so doing a good job. Hayden Wazolski, he's uh, still having a bit of a rock and roll out there. He'll certainly know his race tonight. He'll go home a bit sore and a bit tired, I reckon. But Sammy Lucas lights it up down the front straight away, picks up the checkered flag, comfortable win for him, as it should be, in the Armourine Jackson's machine. This is all great practice for him for the uh, AFGP, the Formula Grand, Australian Formula Grand Prix series that he'll be competing in against all the other tunnel boats. So getting the time in the seat is what it's all about for Sam at the moment. But uh, Ripper Drive, and I think Andrew Chilvers started to get a handle on it. He's had coming back at him, but too little too late, unfortunately, for the Carnage boat. And it's Paul Witten that takes, we'll call it the win for the Mono, second place overall. And in the third place overall is Carnage with Andrew Chilly Chilvers. As I said, only his, uh, only his second race in this boat, or third race in this boat, first race meeting. So, boat that he uh, built built himself, which is a great effort from the young fella. Built the engine, put the boat together. Absolute ripper, he's a, uh, an apprentice mechanic, marine mechanic, so he's done a great job. Hayden Wazolski comes through. And it completes the course as well in the On The Money. So that's it for our unlimited outboards. <laughs> Sammy Lucas, he does a bit of offshore racing. Sammy probably feels like he's doing a bit of offshore racing in the tunnel boat out there today. Absolutely stunning looking boat. The Armourine Jacksons, a credit to the team. They just turn out a beautifully prepared boat.
All right, Sammy, so you've just got the good oil, mate. Fill us in on what's going on, please. Okay, Michelle, well, we just heard that the uh, Gold Cup will be run. So that's the next race. Then uh, the big girl is going out for a run. And, uh, yeah, have we heard any more other than that? But it may well be the last race. Yeah, all right, Sammy. Yeah, well, the way the wind's coming up, it uh, could be interesting. But uh, it'd be great to see uh, the big Oz Connection do a couple of angry laps. Uh, that'd be fantastic. So um, let's hope that folks can get out and actually um, turn it on. Um, so uh, the cup is up next. So we've got boats going back in. I'm not sure what the discussion with the uh, officials would have been like after the red, we'll call it the red flag incident of 2022. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we'll have the boats going out now. I don't know if um, the backer boys were saying that they, they were in, but I don't know if they're going to be in or whether they're not going to be in. I'm not really sure. Scott's got a wind meter going here. It's um, interesting to know what the how many uh, is that kilometres? Kilometres. So about 18 kilometres an hour. The wind at the moment. And Scotty's got all the toys. He knows all the gear, no idea. <laughs> That's what your missus says. <laughs> so it won't be long now. Boats look like they're in the water. I can see, um, obviously, uh, Destiny's in, Turn It Up's in, and Wild Child's in. I think... Um, Gator is in. A bit hard to see from my vantage point. Oh, yep, up to 21 kilometres. Four boats in this one, Ray. Fusion's out and Rival is out. Unfortunate. But still some good quality out there, boys. So our officials are, are kind of hopeful maybe that they might put one or two more races on after Aussie Connection has a run, mate. But uh, obviously, given the wind conditions, if it gets worse, um, that might not happen. So um, probably the last guaranteed race of the day is this one, Sammy. Um, we, we may see some more later on. So, you know, if you love your boat racing like I do, I'll, I'll be sticking around. Don't worry about that. Um, Sam and I might have a beer in the commentary box after this one. But... Uh, we're going to watch the Aussie Connection go around as well. So, let's send them out. Sammy, I feel like I've been a microphone hog today. Would you like to kick this one off, son? Great if that wind just dropped away for about three minutes. Three minutes, that's all we need. <laughs> yep, it'd be absolutely unbelievable. Well, we're about to find out, folks. We are not far away from the start. Is the gator going very wide? So, white flag is about to go, ready, 
down and away they go. Caught them in a good line, very cautious, getting off the mark, all of them, as they go and wild child, it's going to be going. Getting hard on the cab plates, mate. And he's absolutely, Connor Patterson's really throwing it at him in the bottom turn here. What can he do? Robinson will have the power, but uh, Patterson really came in hard, made up a lot of ground down into turn number two. Now Robinson flies down the front straight away in the wild child for the first time. Back to turn that up. Patterson doing a fantastic job. Look at Stephen Hardy coming into the corners, really trying to get it. Destiny's out, unfortunate for Ramsey. And it looks like Gator is on the pace, Sammy. And Connor Patterson got in the car. I thought I said it was a smoke. Come out of that boat, out of the uh, crowd at the bottom end. And it's all Darren Robinson now, the wild child. He's uh, about to lead into the middle boy now at the top end of the circuit with the yellow flag at the ready for him. As uh, Destiny gets off the course and then further back to the Gator. So turn it up is out as well. So there's only two left in it with one left to go, Michaud. And now Darren Robinson, no doubt, can take the foot off the throttle. Yeah, if he's wise, he'll just ease into it now. He's around because there's a massive gap between him and the Gator. And then the Gator has an issue as well. This will be a massive win for Darren Robinson in the Wild Show. If he can take home the 2022 Everlock Gold Cup, it's been a race of attrition. The conditions have been hard. They've been beaten up. There's been red flags. It's all gone on here today. And it's come down to this. Half a lap. And he can pick up the Everlock Gold Cup trophy and put his name with many, many famous names and famous boats. Gator is well and truly off the pace as well, unfortunately, as they pick up the yellow flag. Unfortunate for the McCann's team. Maybe just a little bit too rough for that boat now and a little bit too windy, but the checkered flag comes out. Darren Robinson, this will be the biggest win of his career. If he can bring this one home, it's been all about keeping the gear together and the blown boat has hung together and got the job done. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Darren Robinson in the Wild Child wins the 2022 Epilogue Gold Cup at a slowing pace, Sammy. Well, the wild child has done it. He had a wild ride over in Tasmania last year, if you saw it on live streaming at East Devonport, but <laughs> he's done it today. And uh, in atrocious conditions out there, uh, folks, that would be hard, very hard water. Uh, Bishop, you know yourself, you've been out in uh, conditions obviously like this, but to be strapped in, I suppose, and onboard air supply in a cell, well, you've got all the safety gear available to you. Yeah, you have, Sammy, and uh, we need to put our hands together. It's been a huge weekend for this boat. The Gator, Rick McCanch, he's uh, a Kelvin McCanch, I should say. Rick's not driving, that's Dan. Uh, Kelvin comes through, and very, very tough conditions for that boat, too. They've brought, delaminated the sponsors in that boat in the past. <laughs> the board, so great effort for him to be out here and running, and he has pulled the pin just as quickly as he can and gone off it, and he'll just let the wind blow him back in under the crane. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Gold Cup for 2022. Unfortunately, we had a lot of attrition, but it was all about the man that could get to the finish line, and that man was Darren Robinson in the Wild Child for 2022. So Sam and I are going to take a little bit of a break. Um, please enjoy the big Rolls-Royce Merlin circulating around with Neil Howe at the wheel, and uh, let's hope we can uh, get some noise and some power out on Lake Epilock, the Darren will pull here. And uh, we may be back shortly with some more race. We'll just see how these conditions go. But uh, just a practice run now for the Aussie Connection. Yeah, love it. Give him spirit, he wants to pick up.
And ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the winner of the 2022 Epilog Gold Cup, Darren Robinson in the Wild Child. So the big Rolls Royce Merlin, 27 litres of V12 Rolls Royce engine fire into life. These boats weren't terrific when I was a young fellow, Sammy. You'd come out to Epilock and you'd watch four or five of them race. They still just had that beautiful sound. The engines come out of a Spitfire aeroplane, fighter plane. Heavily modified for use in power boats. They give them more boost. They make them less reliable. <laughs> uh, and more power, of course. They rev them harder than they do in the aeroplane. And uh, this boat probably won't mind these bumps, but uh, it looks like it might have might have gone off song unfortunately they are a very very complicated engine and unfortunately we've got something going on uh, down the front straight here so course boats on the course Okay, well folks, um, if you'd like to stick around, we think we may get uh, some more races in later today, but they are going to take a bit of a break now, so it might be an opportunity to grab yourself something to eat or drink. Um, but, uh, Sammy and I are going to take a bit of a break, and um, we'll be back with, uh, if we have any more racing today, um, we will be back, so uh, we'll see you soon.
Is that? Hey Rumble, you're in trouble. Uh, get back to your car and stop talking. Stevie Rumble, get back to your car. Straight away. Want to do a sign off, Sammy, with him? Oh, we do, sorry. Yep. Alrighty, well, uh, Sammy, that wraps up our live streaming for today. Gee, we saw some great racing, didn't we? The conditions were probably pretty kind to us in the end because, uh, you know, it threatened to blow up all day and it really didn't. Uh, that last race obviously got pretty lumpy, but the rest of the day, I thought we saw some pretty good racing. Yeah, we did see some uh, really good racing, uh, Bishow. You know, th this uh, venue here is uh, quite open to uh, wind, as is, uh, of course, Yarrawonga, you know, the bigger, the bigger venue. So uh, it's a pity, but... Uh, I reckon, uh, you know, what we saw today was uh, pretty high quality. I hope uh, the people around the world over there in America and uh, Canada, especially my friends, uh, enjoyed uh, what they did see. Yeah, look, people from all around the world, as we've chatted them out a few times, but a lot of our friends are at home having to isolate the COVID and whatnot. Certainly hope that it took the pain away a little bit watching the boat racing, at least if you couldn't be here, because I've got a couple of friends that are just chomping at the bit to be here and couldn't be, unfortunately. So our thoughts and hearts go out to them. But uh, I think we had a great day racing. Thank you again, Sammy. You've done a fantastic job, as always. Well, well done. Uh, pleasure to be with you, Bisho, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get a lot more racing done uh, this season. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope for a much uh, better 2022. Get yourselves back. That's the key to the whole thing, isn't it, mate? And uh, we'll get on with life. So, fantastic. Thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed the live streaming. On behalf of Sammy Smith, I'm Dave Bishop. We'll see you next time.